Hello everyone. So today, I've decided I'm going to be giving you a plant tour. We're going to be looking at all of my plants. I have quite a few leaves, as you can see. I have adorned my living area with leaves. Let's start over here by the bin. So over here I have, um, uh, yeah, wow, mind blank already, the Calathea Triostar or Stromanthi Triostar. These guys are like notoriously a bit bitchy, but I found this one to be okay. It's kind of a, it's not a huge one. The bottom leaves are dying off a little bit, um, but most of them look fine. It's mostly been great for me. I heckin' love this guy. He's absolutely goddamn stunning. And the side of the leaves are a super nice pink. They even match my bin bag. You know, incredible. A plus, good guy. Just behind him here, ignore the dirt. Um, I have a tiny little white fusion that I bought on the cutting. It's looking pretty naff at the moment. Um, I did buy this as a big, tall two-leaf cutting, um, and those original two leaves died off, but these little babies sprouted. And I was so excited, because I was like, oh my god, it's growing, holy crap! Now these are like famous for being complete bitches. Assholes, horrible, and you can see why. Uh, they're very sensitive to humidity damage, so if they're not humid enough, they will do this tissue crisping. So I've kind of just been like, eh, you know, it's inevitable. They're gonna do it, fuck it. Um, it's still alive though, so it's okay, but you know, it could be looking a lot better. Uh, this is a Calathea White Fusion, by the way, I don't think I mentioned. But yeah, I just kind of hide them behind here because Calathea are pretty chill with uh, dim light. Um, it, I probably should give it more light than this, but I'm kind of like, you're kind of ugly, I'm gonna stick you there. Uh, this is my variegated Maranta Kerchilda or something, uh, or rabbit foot is the common name, because um, of these, these are like rabbit tracks, I guess is the vibe. Uh, love this guy. Um, I got him for really cheap for like six quid from a garden center near where I used to live, and I was like completely jazzed. Um, so I don't think they noticed it was variegated. Uh, it used to be a lot bigger and bushier than this, but over winter it took a bit of a hit. However, um, as spring has approached, it sprouted a bunch of new babies in the middle, and now they've become these, and it's got these huge gorgeous leaves now, and it's uh, starting to flower again. So I'm like, yeah, nice, recovery. He's a good guy, love him. This is my boy. This is my uh, big Monstera Deliciosa. I'm sure everyone knows these guys. Your, your stereotypical jungle plant. All the Etsy sellers draw this on everything. It, it can't do any wrong, really. It's, it's big, it's beautiful, it's got a cool shape, and it's pretty easy to care for. When you give him a ton of sun, this is a south-facing window, so he gets a lot of sun, they start to get these nice secondary fenestrations, which are these holes. This one has a nice bunch. He's good. It's fun to do this. Anyway, yeah, he gets a lot of nice holes in there. Happy with him. Love him. He casts some really nice shadows there when the sun hits that sweet spot. Uh, next. Oh, but these sit on my snails, by the way. My snails are in there. Hello, snails. Uh, this is a peace lily, but a domino peace lily. Let's get him out the sun a little bit. These guys actually don't need that much sun, but I don't know where else to put him. Um, you can see he has these really nice nice splotches on him. I love this guy. Anything with a kind of sort of speckling pattern because I'm a real sucker for Dalmatians so anything that kind of has like speckles on it I'm like ooh. Uh, these two were adopted from a friend who was moving and she had to get rid of them so I was like alright I'll take them. Uh, I think this is a jade plant um, and I think this is some sort of snake plant. Both succulent. These love sun and being dry so they chill here in the sun all day. Same with this cactus, which is actually not a cactus, I think it's a milkweed or something. Um, this is my boyfriend's only plant, <laughs> and he gets the center of the south-facing window because he's a hungry sun boy. Um, it has bloomed a few times whilst being here, and <laughs> the remnants of the blooms, tiny little sticks. Uh, it, it blooms these huge, gorgeous flowers, um, and we're all like, holy crap. And then one day we're like, oh my god, why does it smell like rotting cat food in here. It turns out it was the smell of the flower and then from a little Google I found out it's nicknamed a corpse plant because its flowers smell like rotting flesh, 
which is a delightful thing to have in your bedroom. Um, but it has, it's not flowering now, so we're safe. Got another succulent kind of thing here. Uh, Ox's tongue, I think this is called. Um, I got this as a gift. Um, got this cool texture and pattern on it. Kind of a kind of an oval shape. Real nice. Uh, this is my Skindapsis silvery Anne. It's not too silvery for a silvery Anne, but I'm still proud of him. He's hanging in. Silvery Anne's have this really gorgeous sort of extra silver to them, really shimmery. Do love this guy, wasn't sure where to put him again. These guys don't need tons of sun, but I was like, I don't know where else to put you. Uh, okay, here, my little bedside table. Uh, this is a Colocation Mojito. This guy used to be a lot bigger and a lot more impressive, but over winter, Colocatia tend to die off because they're really sensitive to the cold. So I'm actually surprised he didn't completely die off. He's still got these nice leaves here. This one's brand new. Um, these two are on their way out. Can't even pick them up. But they get this really nice black patterning on them. And when they're big and mature, it's even more gorgeous. So it used to be bigger, but you know, we'll see what happens in the summer. Maybe it'll bounce back, who knows? Um, these two here are my little Sebu Blues. Really love me a Sebu Blue. The, the kind of bluish turquoise to them is really nice. Um, this one I bought as a single leaf cutting. It was just one leaf and it's since grown this little vine here. Really proud of it. Um, it hasn't grown a new leaf in a while, so I'm keeping an eye on it. Uh, this one I bought actually kind of recently, maybe a few months ago. Um, I was just absolutely baffled by this huge, mature, sort of fenestrated leaf and I was like, holy crap! Um, and it's since, it was kind of unfurling this one at the time and it has since grown this one. So like, oh, just gorgeous, look at them, it's such nice colours. I'm in love with it. This one's just, I think it's called a Philodendron Golden Goddess, which is such a dramatic name. It's just a little guy. Um, just got this one as a tiny little thing, like this big. And it's since grown a really nice size. I really like the shape and colour of it. It's like a pfft, like a pfft. Hiding behind that is my uh, my only cactus. My, uh, I think it's a cactus. I don't know, some, it's a kind of succulent. It's a uh, bear paw cactus because its leaves look like little, little paws, little feet. It's not doing too great right now. Uh, it used to be bushier at the bottom, um, but the bottom leaves kind of died off and it's kind of stretching. Now, uh, Cacti tend to stretch when they need more sun, but it's right here in the middle of a south facing window So I can't do much else for it. So, you know, like fucking be a drama queen, I guess. I don't care. This guy, this is a Syngonium Winlandii um, I'm a real big fan of Syngonium. I really like the leaf shape. They've got these little ears um, This one's like the new leaves are really soft and velvety to the touch. Really nice I love this really dark green with the silver stripe. It's so nice. These ones are not really easy to come across, so um, I got this one from my local plant shop where I live now. And it has amazing stock in it. It gets it gets like a bunch of rare plants for really good prices, so when I saw this I was like, oh my god! Um, so excited when I got this, I'm still living off the high of it. Um, the leaves are really cool, these ones are getting really big. Another thing I love about Syngonia is their growth pattern, they kind of vine off and get really floppy. I absolutely love it. It's like if you were to like put it on a shelf, it would like hang over. Really love it. Oh, you can go back there. And this big guy here, my other big guy. This is a bird of paradise, a Strelitzia. I think Nikolai, it's a, it's a white bird of paradise. Um, so when it eventually flowers in like 30 years or whatever, it'll have a, a white bird of paradise flower. You know, the ones that look like the bird with the crazy hair. Um, you can kind of tell the leaves apart from a regular orange bird of paradise because these leaves are kind of wider and greener and shinier and the other bird of paradise the leaves are kind of narrower longer and kind of a bit more bluish purpley like matte at least that's from what i've seen uh <sighs> catch my breath here let's go here this is my syngonium ice frost or frosted heart um the name obviously from this kind of frosted look on it. Really nice. These are some newer leaves. They've got that stupid focus. Really nice sort of texture on them. Um, the older leaves on this are a lot bigger. 
the new the new leaves are quite small and dainty but they look pretty so I don't really mind. It's getting quite big and bushy there so it's really hanging over the pot and well proud of it. It's very precariously sat on a, a jewellery box back there so one day I'm expecting it to fall over and, and collapse and take my the whole world with it. On this teeny little table here um, I've got a teeny little uh, string of turtles. I got this one as a gift so it's always been quite tiny. It's grown, it's, it was like here when I got it and now it's grown all this. It's not the healthiest looking thing ever but I'm, I'm just glad it's still alive to be honest because I've heard these can be a little bit of pain but I'm not really sure. Um, behind that is a Skindapsis Moonlight which is like real shiny and shimmery. It's growing a new leaf right now. Really love this guy. These are notorious for growing really slow and you know I have had this for about a year and it started off as two leaves and now it's grown three so not too bad. Um, it's pretty as it is so I'm not in any rush. This is a beetle pepper Romeo. I can't remember the proper name for it but loved this just because you know kind of beetle shell looking leaves they're really stiff and it kind of hangs and flops. Something I really like in plants, you'll probably notice that I really like floppy plants. Like, woo, ones that kind of hang over and spread out. Um, it lost a lot of top leaves, you can see it's got some round twigs. Um, this is kind of my like, eh, pile. Like, yeah, I don't really keep a close eye on them. So, uh, if they start dying off, I'm like, oh, oops. Um, here, uh, I've got a teeny, teeny little jewel orchid. I forget the name of the variety, but it's one of the easier ones, I think. Um, kind of pathetic looking. It did have more leaves down here, but they since dropped off. But it did produce a really huge long flower. Um, and it's got pretty leaves. He's hanging in there. He's alive. So, you know, I'm proud of him the way he is. These are some cuttings from my uh, Moranto I took over here. It had some kind of small sad looking branches so I, I cut them off and, and pot, um, uh, propagated them, that's the word, in, in water and they're growing lots of lots of roots now. Um, I was going to replant them back in there uh, but now that one's grown back like a bunch of new leaves and it looks nicer so I think I'm just going to keep these in this little pot because it's kind of a, oops, my little, <laughs> little finch is in the way. Um, it looks like a cute little bouquet here, so, you know, it's kind of like insurance in case the other plant dies. At least I still have this one. Um, this one here, which has been in my face this whole time. This is an Alocasia Frydeck. These are fucking stunning, as you can see. The absolute contrast with the vein. Oh, mm, really, mm, really nice. Um, you can see these lower leaves aren't doing so great. Uh, Alocasia is similar to Curlocasia, as you probably would have guessed. Uh, they are quite sensitive to changes in temperature, I believe. Um, tend to die back in winter. They grow from a bulb, so like a potato. Um, bought this one as a cutting and it's done pretty well. I can see some nice roots establishing in here. Sorry about the focus, it's shite. Um, so I'm just trying to keep it on the moist side. They tend to be really nice and moist, but over winter I didn't want to overdo it because they can get cold and rot really easily. They're too wet in winter so again with the colocasia I'm just happy it's not completely died off over winter. I consider this a success. <laughs> anyway, oh, back here this is a tiny little <laughs> tiny little tub that I used for bugs. Um, got some Syngonium cuttings in here. I've got a tiny little Syngonium elbow. Two leaves, used to have three, one of them died off. Uh, it's, it's doing its thing, it's slow, but it's doing its thing. And that's chilling with a little Syngonium mojito, so it's got these like speckles on it. Um, a good mojito has really high contrast in the speckles, but this one's very mild, but I think it's pretty. And it was quite a cheap cutting, so I'm alright with it. Uh, back here, I've got a Philodendron Malay Gold. Um, it's just one single vine. <laughs> it's just one little tree growing all the way up. I kind of like it just sticking out out of nowhere back there. Oh, and I forgot about this one on this table. This is a parlor palm, but it's a variegated one. Again, my local plant shop with the good stock had this, and I was like, bruh, this guy is my other Maranta. This is the fishbone Maranta, or the Lucanula something Maranta. Um, 
I love how these guys grow because they are kind of crawlers. They cr grow along the forest floor. So it's kind of growing out onto my box of stuff. I put it behind this mirror, trying really hard not to reveal myself in said mirror. Here it is over here. Also balancing on a jewelry box. Uh, but I just like how it, you know, kind of frames the mirror a bit. Now this guy, who I can't ignore anymore, this one is my newest. He has a big Syngonium elbow. You've got these really nice variegated leaves, really nice splashes of white. This one is a new leaf. So such nice patterning on it. It almost looks painted. It's really nice. I kind of succumbed with this one because again, with my local plant shop, they have really good stock. And these ones are usually like 60 up to 80 pounds most of the time. And this one was 30, which I've, I've never spent more than 30 on a plant. Uh, the other one I spent 30 on uh, is a real big one you'll see later. But this one I was like, oh, the, just, oh, the size, the shape, the way it swoops, the way it hangs, it's got good, but mm, I just can't not, you know, um, me being big on Syngonium and the sort of white speckling variegation, I was like, oh damn, I gotta, I can't not. But yeah, I'm very happy with this guy. Hope he doesn't die because he was expensive. Down here, bedside table. This is a Calathea picturata, I think. Um, he used to be a lot taller and bushier, but he had a real attack with spider mites. Um, really pesky pests that especially attack Calathea and Alocasia, it seems. Um, lost a lot of leaves, but um, you can see there's some remnants of damage on these. It's all weird, it's like perfectly circling the pattern, ew. Um, but it's since kind of bounced back, it's had all these new leaves which look pretty good. I'm quite proud of it, it's sprouting a new- ugh. 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 Sprouting a new one back here. So I thought I'm, I was gonna have to bin this because it was pretty much on death's door, but it's really done a nice bounce back, I'm proud of it. Uh, this guy back here is a Raphidophora tetrasperma, which is really fun to say. He is very tall. <laughs> Um, he used to be in the other room, but I was like, it'll be fun to just let him cover the entire wall in here. Uh, completely outgrown his trellis. Uh, I'll deal with that later, <laughs> you know. Really cool shape on these leaves, as you can see, I really love the, uh, the slits. Um, these are nicknamed Mini Monstera, for obvious reasons, because their leaves have got these similar slits to these big guys, but they are not a Monstera, but they are still awesome and pretty easy to be honest they grow really goddamn quickly now this is my pothos wall a bunch of pothos pothos are super common super cheap and super easy and super pretty so you can't go wrong with them they just hang over where i sleep so they tickle me in the night and whisper in my ear they don't um this is my big neon pothos um got this one as a tiny little thing it was kind of just down to here it has since grown really long. I'm super proud of it. I really like the neon plants. They're just so bright and pretty. Such a nice colour. It's an absolute mess. <laughs> but it's really long. I'm proud of it. It sometimes gets so long it gets burnt by my lamp down here. So I'm trying to, you know, get away. Be gone. This is my big Scindapsis Trebi or Scindapsis Exotica. Uh, he's getting pretty long, and even though he has a south-facing window, he keeps sending off all these runners, which are usually an indication of trying to find more light. But I'm like, bitch, you have all the light in the world. There is no reason for you to complain. So I tend to cut these back a lot. You can kind of tell I've cut back a bunch, but I'm just letting him do his thing. He's, uh, they tend to grow nicer leaves when you let them climb. So back here, he's a bit happier where he's trying to get onto the wall but I just so much prefer them hanging that I don't bother letting them climb so the leaves aren't as nice as if you let them climb but you know what I like how it looks so screw you buddy screw you uh this is my philodendron astatum neon something like that um this is a philodendron so philodendron Epipremnum, like Pothos philodendron. They look basically the same, but you'll notice on this one the leaves are kind of kind of pointy, and these ones are more heart-shaped. Also, philodendron tend to 
have their leaf grow out of a sheath, which are these dried off bits here. So when it grows a new leaf, it, it will come out of a, um, a sheath here. Whereas these don't have sheaths, they just kind of come out of the stem, which is why you see a lot of the brown bits, because those are like old bits where the leaves came out of kind of dead tissue. Also, the new leaves on this tend to be really pinky peachy in colour, which is really cute. So I really like this guy, so it's kind of a bit more pinky. This one just has a random blob of variegation on here, which is really neat, so I like this guy. And my Enjoy Pothos, that's it. Um, really cool, splotchy variegation on this. I got these two really early on, I consider these siblings, because I got them at the exact same time, because back then I was like, oh, I really want a... a variegated monstera but they're so expensive why don't i just get a cheap plant with variegation instead so i was like screw you monstera for being so expensive uh so yeah i got these guys these are the siblings so this is an enjoy and this is a manula pothos or manjula um really gorgeous leaves on this one these leaves look super painted it's like a brush stroke here i really like how they just have hard edges and like it's, it looks like it was painted with a dry brush. It's like not blended at all. It's really blocky. Love that. Big fan. Uh, I think that's pretty much all of the ones in this room. Excuse the mess. It doesn't exist, by the way. Um, so this is my desk where I work and do stuff. Um, so I have a bunch of plants on here. Now this is a north window, so the light in here is not great. So I do have a grow light here to help these guys out because uh, north window and super far from the north window so it's not the best place but these guys seem to do okay so uh we'll start here so this is my my basic bitch skindapsis just the skindapsis um wow i really should have looked up names again before filming this completely forgot but yeah this is your basic skindapsis he's like he's real he's real big and bushy but the new leaves tend to be really itty bitty and I tried lots of things to try and avoid that, but it just keeps wanting to sprout these itty bitty leaves. Tried it in sunnier spots, gave it a pot change, made sure it wasn't too salty in the soil. Um, nothing really seemed to do anything, so I'm just kind of leaving it to it. And like, you know, it's, it's growing, it's happy, it's not, it's not losing leaves, so I think it's all right. Um, here, I keep these right by my desk. This one especially, because I love it. This is a philodendron micans. These have really soft velvety leaves and are just really pretty and gorgeous. Uh, some of the leaves are getting a bit orangey and browny, but they're not dying. Like they're not falling off, so I don't really know what's going on with that, but um, I'll just let him vibe. This is a new leaf. It's super soft and shimmery. It's a bit on the small side, but still gorgeous. Look at that, it's so cool. This is another rare little Syngonium. This is a Syngonium Three Kings. When I found the cutting for this, I absolutely lost my mind because usually they go for quite quite a lot of money, but this one was quite cheap. And I really liked the uh, the patterning on these, sort of the light green with the dark green splash in the middle. It was so cool. Um, started off with just these two leaves and a teeny one, but these small little leaves have been the ones that have sprouted in my care and I'm quite happy with them. Obviously not as mature as these, but this was a cutting, so I'm not expecting miracles, you know. Uh, Behind that is what I believe to be the like original form of this guy is the uh, Syngonium angustatum or Angus. <laughs> he's uh, he hangs out back here. I really like this guy because he's really tall. Whoa! He's got this random long ass vine here with these little leaves on him. I've tried cutting it back a bunch of times because the leaves are really puny, but uh, gave up, so I'm just letting him grow now. Um, really love the shape on this guy, he's really tall and lanky with these really cool shaped leaves. Uh, so I love this guy, he hangs out back here. Syngonium don't need tons of light, which is another reason why I like them. Um, and yeah, I just let this hang over here. Uh, this guy, another Syngonium, this is the most basic Syngonium you can get. This is just a Syngonium arrow, I think it's called, or arrowhead. Just the most common Syngonium, it's more of a bush form rather than a vine form, so it just bushes. It'll, it'll eventually vine over and hang a bit, I think, but it'll take a while, it mostly bushes. But I do love this guy because he really like bushes my desk. Um, I got him for free, so I just kind of put him here in the darkest spot in the room just to test him out, and he's done pretty good. He's 
grown loads, so you know, I'm really happy with them. Same with this guy. I got this guy as a gift, kind of using him a bit mean as a experiment to see if plants could survive on this dark part of my desk because the area has the grow light. Um, got an old leaf dying off here, but other than that, it's actually grown really well. I mean, the leaves are small, but that's no surprise because of the light in here. But it's grown this long vine that trails all the way down here, and there's another long vine here. I used to hang this over here, but it just got way too long and in the way of everything. And, you know, I just really like how it jungles this spot up. Okay, um, I'm going to go. I'm going to go over here. Uh, so this is kind of, this is the north window and this one's slightly west as it's on an angle. Um, this is my string of hearts, it's a silver glory string of hearts. Probably can't see too well but it's like, you know, nice silvery kind of colour with like a pinkish on the, un on the underside. Really interesting colours on this one. This is a asparagus fern, not actually a fern, but it's named a fern because it's fern-like. Um, really nice leaves on this one. These ones are really soft. And again, like the Syngonium, I really like how they flop. Just like a big floppy, they look like tiny trees. Some people put these in terrariums to look like tiny trees. But yeah, I just love how floppy it is and it's really plumy and soft. It does have thorns on it though. So sometimes when you're repotting it and stuff, you've got to be careful because I've actually like drawn blood from these thorns. They're quite sharp, uh, but most of the time it's fine. Uh, down here also, I've got a teeny, I kind of forget this area a bit, so they look a bit shite. Uh, I've got a teeny little Syngonium pixie, which is like a tiny version of Syngonium. It's got a dead leaf back here. Um, I've got two tiny baby philodendron orange princes here, or red suns, I'm not sure. There was a like, time in the plant community where these tiny babies were being sold sort of everywhere and people were going crazy for them because they're like, whoa, philodendron prince of orange is so rare, I want one. But they, they do not grow quickly. He's kind of looked like this for a long time. Um, this one used to be a bit bigger, it's died off, and this one used to be a bit smaller, but it's grown a lot, so they're kind of doing opposites right now. Uh, this is a Monstera Peru, or an Epipremna Marble Planet. Um, it's more commonly known as Monstera Peru, but I think it's more of an Epipremnum just from looking at the, the growth of it. it it's more Epipremnum-y, which is the Pothos family, by the way. Uh, this one's been really slow for me. Uh, I mean, it's been doing okay. It's had some casualties, but most of the time it's been fine. Newer leaves have been a bit on the small side, but I might cut back when the weather gets better and see how it does. The leaves are super cool and textured. They look like scales. So it's really cool, this one, super jungly. Oh, okay, next to it is another Epipremnum underneath this big leaf. This is an Epipremnum Penatum blue form. So this is related, this is quite closely to relate, yeah, related to the Cebu blue, except it's the less blue version, even though it's called blue form, which is very confusing, but it's different from the Cebu blue. Um, and this one struck me because it has this nice mature leaf with the uh, bit of uh, fenestration on it, um, This these slits. So I was like, oh, so cool. And then when it kept growing, it was like these tiny little leaves. Seems to be the story of my life is tiny leaves. But I just, I don't want to stake them because I like them when they hang. But you know, well, I'm just letting him chill here and see how he does. This is my Begonia maculata. Big guy. Uh, I got him when he was about this tall. Has since grown into quite the tree. Proud of him. Almost sold him on two different occasions because I was like, eh, not really vibing but I have, I have turned around and now I love him. Just because he's given me so much and I've given him nothing in return, I feel terrible. But now he's like, you know, you know, the real star of the show in this corner. Uh, he flowers a lot in, uh, I think it's late summer. He flowered tons for me last year. The, the, when the flowers died, they were caused a huge mess around here. It was great. Uh, <laughs> At the moment, he's just growing me lots of new leaves, which is really nice, these sort of shiny new leaves. This is the plant I mentioned earlier, it's the only one that I spent f more than 30 quid on, along with the Syngonium Albo. This is... Sorry, I'm running out of breath. <sighs> Alright, this is Philodendron Silver Sword, named because it is silvery and the leaves form a kind of sword shape. Um, whenever I've posted this online, people call it the Among Us plant. 
because of the slightly amogus shape, um, which has ruined it forever. But no, I love it. Um, I got it when it was a lot shorter, maybe, I mean, still tall, maybe about this tall. It is now taller than me. It goes up here. Um, used to be a lot bushier down here, but it has been hidden away from the sun, so it's kind of died off a little bit. Uh, but yeah, the current leaves are doing well. These are super nice mature leaves. It struggled a bit up here over winter. Um, there's a dying leaf here that I need to snap off. But it's bouncing back again with these nice leaves here. So, you know, doing good, proud. Uh, in the shelf is sort of just an agglomeration of cuttings. Um, just a bunch of stuff. I've got uh, some Tradescantia there, that's an orchid. Another Tradescantia, just some Skindapsa, some Pothos cuttings there, which, you know, I cut them off the plant and don't want to waste them. So I put them in a little jar of water and see how they do, and I just kind of clutter this bit with it. So just, oh, this one is falling over. <laughs> so this one, oh, this is a Tradescanta Tiana, which I bought some cuttings of, because the leaves are really pretty and really soft, but it's growing so long that it's becoming it outgrows its pot so quickly so it, it gets really heavy at the ends and falls over and then gets tangled in this pot. <laughs> oh god. Oh, see it's getting a bit... Let's just put him there for now and I'll sort him out. <laughs> he needs a bigger pot. Uh, yeah, what he was tangled in is this, my last Epipremnum. Um, this is a Marble Queen. Again, a really common, easy, cheap one but it has really pretty variegation on it. I absolutely love this guy. Got this guy when he was kind of just this, just this top bit, and he has since grown all the way down here. Very long, very pretty. Um, love this guy, really nice leaves. He's given me everything. Um, and I kind of trusted him in this slightly darker area. Uh, he's had a few completely green leaves, but to be honest, most of them have turned out really nice. Like these like kind of half moony ones are really cool trust him there. Um, behind him, kind of buried, is this blue star fern. You Warriors fans out there will appreciate that name. Uh, really cool leaves on this guy. This is kind of uh, a footed fern, so it grows out of these fuzzy ribosomes on the bottom. Um, loved this plant. I've, I've had this one for years actually. Um, it's a really nice bluish tinge kind of colour, which I really like. Uh, I bought this one ages ago. Um, and I've got a bit of a story with it because it kind of almost completely died back at one point because I had a bit of a, a sad moment and completely neglected all my plants at the time. And this one had like three leaves left and it's since completely bounced back and bushed up so I'm like, oh, oh I love you, he's done so well, I'm so proud of him. Um, here are my rare rat plants, um, they're kind of sleeping back there. Uh, it's a cold day so they're all bundled up. Um, these plants are very affectionate. Uh, they'll come and they'll come and say hi and lick you, and they and they eat, which is weird. Um, sort of carnivorous plants, you could say. This guy is my oldest plant. This is from IKEA years ago, probably like oh, five years ago now. Um, it used to be taller and thinner. Now it has gotten squat and bushy. Um, it's been through a lot of highs and lows, this one. It sort of died back and come back a good number of times because whenever I sort of move it into a new position, its leaves will acclimate. It'll get really shitty gross leaves like this and then I'll completely cut it back and all the new leaves will grow back really shiny looking and nice. So quite proud of this guy. Considering it's a Calathea, I'm surprised I've not killed it yet. And this one's sort of really, oh, I broke a leaf there. <laughs> This one's sort of really fuzzy and soft, so it's really fun to stroke. I'm sort of revealing its disgusting underbelly back here. I need to give it a bit of a clean up. <laughs> but he just kind of, I use this to sort of hide junk. So we've got junk behind here where we have no place to store. So, you know, it's like, oh, now it looks pretty because there's a plant there. Yeah, it totally works. Don't worry about it. Here on our, our stuff table, um, another syngonium. Oops. Hit it a bit hard. Uh, this is your other basic bitch syngonium. This is just a syngonium white butterfly. Uh, I like this guy because he's another kind of long vining syngonium. 
so he gets really long and lanky and he eventually sort of falls over and yeah can't go wrong he's in this dark spot because they just they just grow and it is you know super pretty kind of frosty looking got some new leaves going on just leaving him there on top of the the rat plant food to get some nice height next to him is a ZZ raven now ZZ's or uh, it's like Z Zamiculus Zomifala or something I don't know the full name but Azizi um, I recommend these to almost everyone just because they're so goddamn easy they're kind of notorious for just never dying um, and if you do kill one it's fine you'll be all right let me just hide the cough medicine um, this is a raven version so it's black usually they're a dark green but this is a black one when it grows new leaves they'll be bright green and then they'll slowly turn black and it's really cool to watch this one hasn't grown much i bought it as a cutting and then i potted it up and i think it's just working on growing roots right now so most of the growing it's doing is oops under the soil and not above so it's just kind of doing its thing um right next to it uh this is another old plant it's kind of it's exactly the same as the fuzzy one the big fuzzy one except it's a tiny version bought this from my desk back when i started my first job didn't know shit about plants i didn't realize this wouldn't do well in the dark uh died back like this then i sort of revived it and it got really pretty again and now it's reverting back to its shit stage so i'm just kind of leaving it here to keep an eye on it I've, i need to cut it i've cut it back a few times i need to cut it back again but the new leaves, which, you know, one's sprouting here, they come back a bit nicer, but we're just ignoring that one for now because it's fucking ugly. Okay, now finally, in this corner, this is our little shitty kitchen corner. This is what I call my wet box. Um, it's just a box with no drainage. This used to be an old snail box of mine. Um, just wet soil and wet moss in here, and I put sort of wet loving plants in here. So I've got a maidenhair fern in here, um, a photonia, um, and polka dot plant, hypostes, which is this guy. They're usually a bit bushier. There's a, probably a better look at one. You know, nice spotty plants. There's also a tiny little um, Syngonium robusta, I think. Um, and these guys just like being kind of wet. So this doesn't have any drainage, so I have to be careful with watering in case I overwater it. But most of the time it's been fine. This uh, hypostes is actually growing some new babies, so all these tiny little fuzzy bushes in here are new babies, so I'm like, woo, it's doing well. I'm so proud of it. Because the rest of it is just this fucking sparse tree <laughs> with tiny leaves, but it grew a ton of flowers. They're all dead now, but all those like brown specks that you see are all old flowers, so it was pretty happy. It's just a bit sparse looking. Next to that is a parsley. Uh, there's another hypostes here and an old terrarium of mine. The terrarium kind of died off at the bottom, but it's growing some more down there and it's, you know, it's all right. It, it used to look a lot worse, so I'm all right with it. And this is probably, I think, my second oldest plant. This is also an Ikea plant. Started off as a tiny little Ikea ivy and it grew into this beast. And there's a huge cluster of vines down here. And this one, which I'm looping over here, it's growing down here. Uh, this used to be even longer than this but um when i moved here it kind of died back a little bit but now it's grown back so I'm quite happy with it and it's kind of it's really enjoying this north window here which is lovely um i would absolutely love to put it on top of a shelf like i used to have it on the shelf behind my desk at my old place where it hung down behind my computer and it looked really nice but all the high places here i can hang it are really dark <laughs> So I'm just kind of leaving it in this corner for now to kind of bush up this window and, you know, withdraw the attention from the bins. Um, a leaf has fallen there. There we go. Um, so yeah, that's it. Those are my plants. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.